Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the pandemic version of your physics class. Um, lesson, I guess I'll call it lesson two. <laughs> okay, uh, lesson two is a topic called conservation momentum. And listen, if you're bored during the apocalypse and you want to do something, you can always play pool. Okay, and we could play versus each other online. We don't even have to. We can we can practice our social distancing and we can play each other pool. Okay, so right now I'm playing versus the computer. And I, I just wanted to show you how this works. Um, there's a lot of physics going on here, but it demonstrates what we call the law of conservation momentum. So I'm going to pick this red ball. Okay, I'm going to hit it with the white ball. And a collision is going to take place. Now, we call this an isolated system. Okay, the pool table. What that means is that external, any external forces that are acting on the system, like gravity and the normal force, they cancel out. And so the only forces that govern the motion of the balls are just the forces between them when they hit each other. Okay, so that's called an isolated system. And in an isolated system, momentum has to be conserved in all the collisions that take place. Okay, so look, I'm gonna hit this red ball. And I'm trying to hit it in a straight line on purpose. I'm not actually trying to win the game. I just want to demonstrate what we call a one-dimensional problem. Okay, so I'm going to wind up. Okay, I'm going to give the white ball some momentum. It's going to hit the red ball. You know what's going to happen. The red ball is going to move forward. The white ball is going to slow down. But here's what you won't get just by looking. You won't get that the momentum that the white ball had before it collided. Okay, it's the total momentum in the system is conserved before and after the collision. It means the total number hasn't changed. The right, white ball is going to gain some. The, uh, or sorry, the red ball is going to gain momentum and the white ball is going to lose some, but the total will stay the same. Okay, and actually what happened is the red ball got it all. Looked like in this case, the white ball lost everything. Okay, now the computer is going to take a shot. Oh, he almost sunk the white ball. Wow, that was a good shot. Here, I'll just let the computer take a couple of turns. Okay. So, that's my turn again. And I'm going to, this time, hit, I'll try the blue ball here. But I'm going to, on purpose, hit it a little off axis. Okay, now what happens here, we call this a two-dimensional problem. Here, this white vector you see here represents the initial momentum, or at least the direction of the white ball. And the blue ball is going to go this way, the white ball is going to go this way. But if you add up these two vectors that you get here, now they're not to scale, so they don't look like they add up. But if you add up these two vectors tip to tail, they will add up to give you the original momentum that the white ball had before the collision took place. And again, that's the law of conservation of momentum. Since momentum is a vector, then the, the whole vector has to be conserved. Okay, so this time the white ball will move off in a different direction, so it'll change direction, and the blue ball will move off as well. And you see what happened there. That's a two-dimensional collision. All right, so I'm going to stop this video here, and then the next video you see will show you what happens when, uh, well, I'll just give you the notes, okay, and we'll start with one-dimensional problems, and then we'll go to two-dimensional problems.